he had 58 in his mind. So, which one he's going to eliminate, I'll show you just now, what he did. He said, verse 13 and 12, كَذَّبَتَ قَبْلَهُمْ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ Watch my fingers. وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّثِّ وَثَمُودِ وَعَادٌ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوتِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْأَيْكَةِ وَقَوْمُ تُبَّةِ كُلُّ كَذَّبَ الرُّسُلُ وَحَقَّ وَعِيدِ Only four. I said there were five there. You know where the fifth one was? Here. وَإِخْوَانُ لُوتِ This should have been قَوْمُ لُوتِ You know why? Because twelve times, other places in the Qur'an, monotonously, Allah is saying, قوم لود, قوم لود, for that abominable people who were destroyed for their unnatural lusts. In America, they call them gays, gays now, gays. You know, for, a, for the sickness, they call them gays, very nice, happy, lucky people. Gays. 300,000 gathered in June in San Francisco on a pilgrimage last June, led by 50 lesbians and motorcycles. Qawm Ulut. That Qawm Ulut Allah describes in the Quran, 12 places, is a Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut, Qawm Ulut. Monotonously, as if he doesn't know synonyms. And you know, synonym, synonym means, you know, you use different words meaning the same thing. It lends fragrance to speech, it beautifies your talk. I said, fragrance to speech, it beautifies your talk. This is a synonym. Fragrance, beautify. You see? So I'm saying the same thing, but I'm using different words. It lends beauty to speech. And our author, 12 times, Komolut, Komolut, Komolut. He didn't know that he can have another word. He said, what is this? Same word, same word again. And yet the same author, look, he changes four times in two verses. Watch. The same author for the same word. Now he's changing four times to show you that he knows synonyms. Four times he changes in two verses. Watch. He said, كَذَّبَتَ قَبْلَهُمْ قَوْمُ نُوحٍ He used the word قَوْم for people. وَأَصْحَابَ الرَّسِّ He used the word أَصْحَابَ for people. وَثَمُودِ And without adding an adjective, he conveys the idea of people. This author of ours. وَآدُمْ وَفِرْعَوْنُ وَإِخْوَانُ لُوتِ In two verses, he changed four times. And yet throughout the Quran, he never changed. Say, Qamulut, 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 Qamulut. Now the thirteenth time, in the thirteenth verse, he changed. Immediately, no, look, if an author is doing that kind of one repetition, he must have had a reason. Why keeps on repeating the same word, monotonously? Now for the thirteenth time, in the thirteenth verse, he changes. Now he says, Wa ikhwan ulut, instead of Qamulut. See? It was Qawm Ulut, Rao, 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 no change, now he changes. So I said, look, it must have gone through his mind that if I had Qawm Ulut here, he'll be 58 Qawfs, and 58 is not a multiple of 19. He is showing it to us. He said, look, this is an omnipotent, omniscient being doing the job. This is not happening by coincidences. Can't you see? It's not a coincidence. If 13 times it's said Qawm Ulut, it will be coincidence. He said, no, 12 times I'm doing it, deliberately. And 13th time I'm changing. Can't you see? Something is going through his mind. He says, look, I know, you'll see it one day. He wants you to see it. That he's at work. That this is Allah's kalam. You know, so Allah says, this is the system that he has established to protect his book from any kind of tampering. Every surah you take, alif, lam, meme, Count the alis and the lambs and the memes. Divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Ha, meme, add the ha's and the memes. Pull them together, divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Ya, seen, add the ya's and the scenes. Pull them together, divide by 19, exact multiple of 19. Everyone, exact multiple of 19. All physical, visual, visual. You don't have to, anybody to explain to you, tell you interpretation. No interpretation is required. You count them with your eyes and you see it with your eyes that no human beings or group of human beings could have ever devised this system of protecting a book from any type of tampering. In 1400 years, if we lost a verse with an alif or a lam or a meme in Surah Baqarah, the count would have gone off. 
in 1400 years, if somebody added a sentence, a verse with an alif or a lam or a meme, your count would have gone off. After 1400 years, you can count it and you verify it. This is man exact, exact, exact. Who did it? Muhammad did it? You say he did it? I said, then you have to worship him. He is your God. He is the creator of this universe. He says, I'm not. I'm a man like you. <laughs> Believe in Allah. Worship him and don't associate partners with him. So Allah says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. That it is for us to send down the revelation. For us. And it is for us to protect it. What you? You gonna protect this book? His book, you gonna protect it? He says, this is my job. My book, I'll see to it that it is protected. Now, the odds of this book being formulated on this basis, the computer was asked, what are the odds? So the answer was given, 600 and... 626 septillions to one against it occurring. The odds, the miraculous nature. And after finding this figure, by the day we are making discoveries, by the day, joking, jokingly we are making discoveries now, jokingly. I'll show you. Now we find out in the Quran, the number of time numbers are, are spoken of in the Quran. Like Ahad, Ahad means one, it's a number. Isnain means two, number. Thalasa means three, number. The number of times numbers are mentioned in the Quran are 285 times. Divide by 19, you say 19 times 6 on the dot. The number of times numbers are mentioned in the Quran is a multiple of 19. Now those numbers add them, add them up. You add the numbers, it comes to 174,591 the value of those numbers. You add them together, it comes to 174,591. Divide by 19, it's a 19 times 9,189 on the dot. Now you eliminate the repetition, and what you are left with, you add that remaining numbers, it comes to 162,146. Divide by 19, it's a 19 times 8,534 on the dot. Who's doing this? Muhammad doing it? And I said, joking, jokingly, we are making discoveries. You see, this discovery, I'm sharing with the Hafiz friend. We were schooling together. Hafiz uh, Musa, at uh, some bargain, this thing, clothing department in Commercial Road. So I go to him and say, Hafiz, sir. I says, you know, I have discovered a new angle of looking at the Quran. He said, look, I also, you know, the man is, sometimes some people are so enthusiastic, they don't listen. You know, now they want to tell you. I said, look, I also came across a man who had a new angle. I said, all right, what's the new angle? He said, you see, he was asking me how many ha-has in the Quran. Ha-has. <laughs> how many ha-has in the Quran? Some sacrilegious. It was like if you're making a joke. How many ha-has in the Quran? So he said, no, what he was talking about was, he said, the surah was shams. So wa shamsi wa duha ha wa al qamari iza tala ha wa nafsim wa ma sawa ha qad afla So he's reading, he's half of the Quran, you see, I'm not. The man is reading and I'm doing like that, counting. Ha 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 ha. When he finishes, I say, you know how is that, how many? He says, no, I said 19. <laughs> joking, joking. Day. I read a book by Dr. Ahmad Sakar. He calls it Islamic orations. You know, khutbas, lectures, sermons. Islamic orations by Dr. Ahmad Sakar from America. In that book of his, he didn't know what he's writing. He's just writing whatever he found. So he says here, he says the number of times months are mentioned in the Quran 19 times. The number of times year is mentioned in the Quran 19 times. But he didn't know that he was helping us in our research. He's just saying, you know, that 19 times the month is used, 19 times is used, but he doesn't know about 19. So I said, look at it. There is endless, endless research you can do. And you can verify, satisfy. I said, this is not the work of man. 
And Allah challenges. He challenges. He says, Qul, tell them. La in jitama atil insu al jinnu. Ala an yaktu bi misli haza al Quran. La yaktuna bi mislihi. Wa law kana ba'duhum li ba'din zahira. So, Qul, tell them. La in jitama atil insu al jinnu. That if the whole of mankind and jinns, spirits, computers, your wizards, your electric wizards, get them together to formulate the right composed of a book like the Quran. So you'll never be able to produce the like thereof. Even if you backed up each other with help and support, you'll never be able to produce the like of this book. This is my dear brothers and sisters, Mr. Chairman. For us, that each and every word in the Quran, now we realized, I realized after seeing this, that each and every word was perfectly chosen, chiseled, placed and counted. It was chosen, there is no excuse, you see there was in the mind, skepticism. He said maybe, you know, if Allah said like this, you know he's terrifying people with hellfire, hellfire, and the psychologist says it's not good psychology. <laughs> the psychologist is not good psychology. I say, the psychology is mad. That guy Sprock in America, he made millions writing books on child psychology. Now after 20 years of making millions, now he said he was wrong. In psychology, he was at the pole. After 20 years, he's made more than 20 million writing books on child psychology. Now he said, you know, he, now he knows he, he was wrong. <laughs> in the meantime, he made his millions. So when Allah tells you something in the Quran, you know it is coming from an omnipotent, omniscient being. Every word is perfectly chosen, chiseled, placed and counted. And this is the book we have. There is not another group on earth that can produce a book that for 14 centuries it has remained so pure without the change of a dot. Now it is our duty, my dear brothers and sisters, that we take up this book, come into first-hand contact with Allah's Kalam. Let Allah speak to us, because He's speaking to us through His book. And share it with people, mend our lives and mend the lives of our environment, change the environment. Because if you don't do that, the punishment is there. You see, this is law, the law comes into force. So in, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا خَيْرَكُمْ So if you will not fulfill your duties and obligations, O Muslims, يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا خَيْرَكُمْ We will substitute in your place another people. ثُمَّ لَا يَكُنُ أَمْسَالَكُمْ Then they will not be like you. May Allah bari ta'ala, you know, don't take this honor and the privilege out of our hands. And may we become worthy to deliver this message to the rest of mankind and mend our lives. وَأَخُلُ الدَّعْوَانَ عَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ MashaAllah, as Muslims, we do not applaud to something like that. We say, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, there are many people here tonight, and we are indeed happy to see so many, and there are many outside also. Because we might leave the hall immediately afterwards, let me just remind you that translations of the Qur'an will be on sale outside at the price of 10 rands for two. The video cassettes on the series will be available soon at 25 rand a cassette. Let me also tell you that it is very rare that you find people delivering lectures and allowing questions at the end. Mr. Ahmad Dinat, on any of the topics on which he speaks, allows questions. He allows you to come up to the microphone and make statements. He also allows you to come and rectify him if he has made any mistake as far as you are concerned. But please bear with us, this is not a debate. You would like to entertain as many questions as possible, but if you want to set up a debate on any of the topics, please book a hall and write to Mr. Ahmadina or phone him, and he is willing to come and debate the topic on the stage, in public, on any of the topics on which he specializes. But tonight, you are free to come up and put your question. One proviso, that your question is only centered around the topic that was dealt with tonight. Please don't refer to any other thing. And Mr. Ahmadi that knows what he has said, 
It's almost unnecessary for me to remind you. He will tell you I did not speak about that. And if you doubt his word, buy the video cassette thereafter to see who is telling a lie. When a person puts a question, I would like you to keep quiet and please do not laugh if anything is funny. And I would like to add my bit just to strengthen the fact that this book, which is such a wonder, that this book which is the living miracle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, asks to be read. And I sincerely trust and believe that we will read it with understanding. If there's any brother or person or sister who would like to put a question, he's free to come up to the microphone in front here. There is somebody coming up from the far side. Shh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening, sirs. Mr. Ahmadidat, you understand the word miracle? and what it means, cause I heard you to. Now don't you think that God the Almighty and of wisdom would have given Muhammad knowledge to memorize every word that has been telegramized to him out of heaven and would have steered his hand to write the Quran instead of using others and to put it together only 23 years after his death because a miracle is instant, not yes. What do you say? Thank you. Thank you. What I say is that you see the funny thing happened that Jesus Christ, the veritable Son of God according to the Christians, leave out writing anything, not a word of he ever wrote a word in his lifetime, not a word was written. And the things that are written now are written by people who were not even his disciples, like Mark and Luke, were not even one of the twelve. So whatever you are trying to insinuate about the Prophet of Islam is more fitting that criticism on Jesus Christ and the Gospels than on the Quran. Yes. Next question, please. Uh, do I understand that? Uh, sorry, uh, if there are any other people who would like to put the question, please come up now. Time is going. Please come up now and queue up here beside, behind John. Yes. And if you are not in the queue now, uh, I'll have to stop anybody else from coming up. Good evening, my sir. Into the microphone, please. Uh, I just want to... Uh, uh, do I correctly understand that one cannot... Uh, uh, it's unlikely, most unlikely, uh, to have a sentence made with 19 letters? Do I, do I understand that correctly or not? So I can... I think you didn't hear correctly. Right, you see what I said that, that perhaps, oh. if you remember the words, I said perhaps my words also were perfectly chosen, chiseled and counted. I said perhaps in your lifetime you will not come across a sentence with 19 letters to start your book. That's my exact words. Uh, next question, please. Truth and love will win. Love is patient, is kind. Do not lay up treasures. Beware false prophets. There is deceit in lies. I could give you quite a few more sentences with 19 letters each. You can count them. I'm quite surprised um, yeah. that here are about a thousand Muslims who can listen to a presentation like that without standing up and saying a word. Brother, uh, one point please. Uh, speak into the mic and secondly, I think yes, the sentences which you made, it was pointed out to the brother before you that it was distinctly said that no book starts off or nobody sets out to write a book with 19 letters at the start. I can also sit down now, I can tell you, and write some sentence with 19 letters. Oh, Where sorry, Mr. Chairman, not? these sentences are not mine. They are taken out from a book. No, I don't say. I mean, you can bring it from anybody. It doesn't start off a book like that. What's the point? Uh, what I want to say is this, that the whole hypothesis about the number 19 was very thoroughly dealt with two years ago in the Muslim Digest. And if anybody wants to read that up, he can do that for himself. 
where it's very clearly pointed out that the number 19 theory is not Islamic but rather a Baha'i invention that was brought up to bring people away from Islam. I'm surprised that brother, nobody is brother, standing sorry, up. Brother, sorry, excuse me, um, excuse me, please. Yes. You've made about three statements and yes. you've also read a sentence. Could we get to the next question, sorry, please? Sorry, can I come to my question? Uh, I'm if waiting you have on a question. It. If you have a question, please come with it. Yes. Well, I'm surprised, Mr. D, that how you can have... Your question, not your surprise, we want your question. <laughs> Mr. If you don't Didat. Understand English, look, if you don't understand English, then you better speak in German and let somebody translate it for you. A question, you ask me a direct question, I'll give you an answer. Now, there's no sense in you bringing books that were written some years ago. How, when was it written, that book? You were listening for one and a half hour, you listened to me propounding a subject. And out of that whole one and a half hour, you haven't got a single question. Oh, yes. You have to go and read a book written by somebody else. God has given you intelligence and you claim to have got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit in you. I want to know what the Holy Spirit is telling you now about this, what I have shown you. Either you accept it, either you accept it, or you find what is wrong with what I showed you now. You show one point that you, find, you can find a flaw. Mr. Didat, I find it difficult if I can't make any statement that you just pointed out. You have made half a dozen show, already. You have made half a dozen wrong. statements already. Well, I could uh, make another sorry. 20, 50 statements sorry. if you like. So from Brother, this in sorry. fairness, no, please. Yes. I, I said I conduct the meeting. I'm being as fair as possible. If I rule you out of order, I may be right or wrong. But just, yes. you've got to obey somebody. In sure. this case, it's placed the authority is vested in me. Could I say you've made a statement, and I think all the people, if they haven't heard it, I'll tell them to say that you didn't have a single question about what was said here, but you quoted other people as saying this is a Baha'i invention or anything. That is, that's only one of the statements, right? Could I have the next question, please? Could you take your turn there? Please. can I give my question? No. Could you please go there? We were given you ample time. No. May I put this as a point of correction? It is a well known, it is well known that the third caliph of Islam, Uthman ordered all conflicting copies of, of the Quran to be burnt during his reign. And he arbitrarily decided that Hafsa's edition was the authentic one. That is, it's uh, one of Muhammad's, uh, Muhammad's wives. The final authentic Quran was determined not by Allah's degree, not by the prophet of Islam, but by the discretion of a fallible man. Bukhari reports the burning of all other versions of the Quran and establishes Hafsa's edition by Uthman in al Volume 3, page 708. Point of correction. Thank you. Can you see, my dear brothers and sisters, it's a sickness. Can you see the sickness that has got them? One and a half hour, we showed it to you Count them, count them now physically. Unless you are blind, you ask somebody else. And you don't have to know Arabic. I'm telling you, you don't have to know Arabic. Why don't you do it yourself? It won't take you five minutes. The Quran is here while the other people are asking questions. Why don't you check up and see what I have told you is true or not? Chapter 50, chapter 42. But no, you have, must come out. You have the last word to make your criticism. I said, now, whatever and however the Qur'an was compiled, you take the Qur'an and the proof is there. Allah Baridala tells you, God Almighty tells you in the Qur'an, it is His job to protect it from any type of interpolation, any type of addition or deletion. So you count them now, Surah Qaf, count how many Qafs there? You say 57. Right. If they had somebody added something, it, the count won't be there. If somebody had lost out something, Usman lost out something, the count would have gone off. Alif Lam Mim, Alif Lam Mim, again, how many times? Seven times Alif Lam Mim Surahs. Such a simple thing. Why don't you count the Alifs and the Lams and the Mims? And you see whether Usman missed out or Hafsa missed out or who missed out. So when you see that today, after 1,400 years, you, according to your God-given intelligence and your eyesight that God has given you, Unless, as I said, you are spiritually blind, spiritually jaundiced, you can't see it. Here is a test being given to you now, a visual miracle, that is this God's work, handiwork of Muhammad's. 
And if Osman lost out anything or Hafsa lost out anything, you would have found it here. That is what you have to do. Produce what is missing. John, could you right, put Mr. a question? Ahmad, did that, what does the Bible say some more about Muhammad? Back again to that lecture. No, here no, John, comes. John, John, no, please. No, it's just to prove. No, no, please. Okay. Relating only yes. to the topic. Right, though? A copy to the topic. I will rise up a brother likewise. No. John, that is not to do with tonight's nice topic. Let's be fit. No, on. Now, John, uh, with respect to you, but uh, we'll then have to close the meeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Good night, ladies and gentlemen.